Here's a final example using rigid rotator in two dimensions, particle on a string. A pi electron in benzene can be th approximated as a particle on a string. Why is that? Well, let's look at benzene. Uh, benzene, my recollection from organic chemistry, is something like this. And uh, let's see, yeah, it goes down like this. C, C. I'm not an organic chemist, so I can't draw these structures. But I think, yes, six hydrogen, six carbons. There it is. And uh, each carbon is sp2 hybridized, which means you have an unused p orbital left over on each carbon. And they're all lined up like this and these p orbitals can overlap and form this delocalized molecular orbital all the way around here and the idea is electron in these delocalized molecular orbital can s travel around approximately in a circle there's a center of rotation so let's see if the uh, particle on a string can uh, works by trying to calculate the radius here, the radius of orbit, or essentially the uh, diameter, half the diameter, of the benzene ring. Okay, so that's where we're going. Uh, the pi electron absorbs light about here, and we're going to say that corresponds to an m equal 3 to m equal 4 transition. Calculate the diameter of the benzene ring in nanometer. Okay, well, let's just see here. So we say that's, uh, here's the M equal three energy level for the rigid rotator. Here's the M equal four. And we're looking for the change in energy, uh, delta E going from here to here. Well, we have an experimental measurement of that. It's uh, related to 260 nanometer. And then we're going to equate that experimental measurement with what we predict from particle on a string. So experimentally, let's see, uh, wavelength, change uh, delta E for wavelength to energy, HC over lambda. All right, so H, maybe I'll do it down here and run out of space. 6.6, 6, uh, actually, uh, H over C, yes, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th. We'll put everything in SI units. So this will come out to be joule. C, 3 times 10 to the 8th meter per second. And lambda, given in the problem, is 260 times 10 to the minus 9th meter. So delta E that you measure experimentally is 7.65 times 10 to the minus 19th joule. All right, so that's that energy level gap, delta E, measured experimentally. Now, let's see what we predict quantum mechanically. So the delta E will be the energy of the m equal 4 state minus the energy of the m equal 3 state. The energy of the m equal 4 state is 4 squared h bar squared over 2i, and i is m times r. That's where that r is going to come come from. This r, this is the radius of orbit. So the electron is going around here, and that's the radius of the orbit. Uh, subtract that off from the uh, m equal 3 state. So that's 3 squared h bar squared over 2 mr. We'll combine that. That's 4 squared minus 3 squared uh, h bar squared over 2 times m, this is mass, not quantum number, uh, times r. So that's what we would do quantum mechanically for delta E, and we're going to equate that with what we measure experimentally, 7.65 times 10 to the minus 19th joule. And I'm sorry, I forgot the r squared there. Should be mr squared, moment of inertia. So we solve this equation for r. r we get to be, uh, let's see, 2.37 times 10 to the minus 10th meter, or in other, put that in nanometer, the problem asks for nanometer, point, uh, 0.273 nanometer, might as well do an angstrom, this is 2.73 angstrom. And let's see if that's reasonable. 
Yeah, that's probably reasonable. 2.73 means the width of the benzene ring is around 5 angstrom. Yeah, that's approximately right. So we used quantum uh, mechanics and particle on a string uh, to get the diameter of a benzene ring, which uh, when we judiciously, judici judiciously chose for N3 for our uh, states here, we got approximately the right number.